Hey, 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 here's Captain K. Ahoy, you land lovers, and welcome aboard my channel. This is Captain Concept, and today we're talking about smart trains in Factorio. You know, with the recent 0.13 update, they added a few more options on how to control the trains. So we're going to look into that, as well as the new combinators that have been added to the circuit network. So the easy part is the new options that they added to the trains. Previously it was only time passed, now we have the conditions inventory full, inventory empty, item count, circuit network and inactivity. As you can see, these trains that are parking here, they are set for the iron main station which is over here. And they'll go there and wait until the cargo inventory is empty. So is this train that's waiting here at the moment. After that they run to the collecting area and here they have the setup of wait until 50 seconds passed or the inventory is full. Conditions are set up really easy, you just click on wait condition, you add the condition and then you decide whether or not it should be AND or OR. Let's remove that for now. Why have I set it up this way? This way I'm sure that my smelting area never runs out of ore because after 50 seconds, even if it's not full, he shall head back to the main station and deliver that ore. But also I don't want it to wait there longer if he's already full, so as soon as he's full he shall head out to the smelting area which is over here, here's my big smelting network and the trains will wait here and act as a, a second buffer. You know, I Previously you would unload into the chests like I did here, I still have the small buffer and from the chests it'll go into the system. But right now I have this, this cargo wagon sitting here as sort of a big chest. It'll sit there and empty slowly Right now nothing is running, let's start your research. Insert capacity bonus, always a good thing to have. As soon as I start to research it should use copper, here we go. So it'll empty the cargo wagon and once it's empty, let's simulate that, the train leaves and the next train is gonna come in and assure constant flow. So this setup is very efficient also. The trains are waiting here in the safe area. They're not going to use any fuel as long as they sit here. They just wait and I can really recommend that. The waiting area also very quickly set up simply you put rail signals here to separate the three tracks from the, the blocks. The train blocks they're in and here I put down three chain signals that prevent the train from waiting in this area and clog up that junction so very simply and see here the next train is gonna come in with another full inventory waiting to be emptied so very nice setup you don't need multiple stations here one station is enough and guarantees a constant flow of course if you need a higher throughput you can expand the same system with two stations here just give them the same name and then the train will choose either one which is free now on to the more complex stuff up here see most of my oil is coming from closer sources that I have directly connected via pipes. But I have uh, also a few oil fields that are further away where I made use of trains. So I thought how can we apply the same principle to oil trains because here it works a little more different because the barrels need to be emptied so I can't just set the condition on empty. So I decided to set it, up, set it up in a way using a circuit network. So the train arrives at the station, it'll unload the 
full crude oil barrels that then get emptied in this assembling machine, put into a buffer tank and then being piped out into the main network. Empty barrels go back here into another buffer chest and from here they go into the cargo wagon. Now I wanted the train to wait here until his cargo is once fully unloaded and then the empty barrels are put back into this cargo wagon so that one train always carries the same amount of barrels around so I don't have to to fiddle around with balancers or smart inserters to assure that they always have the same amount of barrels like this I can have as many trains as I want and they'll never run out of barrels because they'll always maintain their load. Now the way I did this is using those decider combinators and I set up a decider combinator to this iron chest that's checking whether or not it has less than one barrel in it. So as soon as this one has zero crude oil barrels it'll output a signal G. This signal then goes to this decider combinator that's basically an AND gate, but I'll come to that in a minute. Because I didn't want the train to head out as soon as this chest is empty, because when this chest is empty, there's still one or two barrels that are being emptied and put back into the train. For that I needed a so-called clock that I built also using those combinators. For that I used an arithmic combinator. He has an input signal C, C for counting. You can use whatever signal you want. And he adds 1 to that signal and outputs the same signal. That makes it count up. As you can see here, it's rather fast counting up from 1 to 1000. Now why does it cap at a thousand? You can see as soon as it reaches one thousand it'll reset to one because without the reset it would just go on and count and count and go on and I couldn't make much use of the signal. Here it goes and it resets. The reset is done by using another decider combinator so this signal runs into this decider combinator and he outputs the signal C as long as it's lower than 1000. This number is arbitrary, you can set it lower if you want a faster clock, but as long as it's lower it'll output the same signal C, which then the arithmetic combinator adds 1 and feeds it back into the loop, so this loop is counting up, but once it reaches 1000 it'll stop so we have only an output, one output signal of C that then starts the loop again. Um, you can't make it that it outputs zero signal. It always starts at one. So that's just the way they work. But with this loop, I could connect another decider combinator. And this decider combinator checks if the signal C is bigger than 990. So basically, if the signal is between 990 and 1000, it'll output one signal G. G for go. And this signal G, as mentioned, also goes into this decider combinator. And this decider combinator is an AND gate. That means only if this signal from the chest, so only if this chest is empty and the loop is between 1900 so that clock kind of gives us a delay only if those signal together are active so you could also say if G is bigger than one it'll output one signal G to the train so this goes here goes to the train stop with the mode of operation sent to train and the train waiting condition is wait until signal G is bigger than zero. So if this one is go and the clock sends a go pulse, this one sends go to the train and the train will head out of the station. Let's see if we empty this chest. 
Where are we? 300? Yeah. Let's empty this chest for now. So you can see this one out now outputs a signal of G. This one is counting up and this one has an input signal of G1 and it'll reach 1000 any, any second. So we have two and it's sent to go to the train. And the train is heading out grabbing some new oil. Let's put that back. And here the next train is going to come into station. So to set this up what you need is you need one arithmetic combinators, four desired combinators and of course the chest. Previously it had to be a smart chest, now you can just use any chest which is very nice. So you plug down the chest and a few red and green wires you need as well of course. Let's create some of those. So first let's use the decider combinator that checks whether or not the chest is empty. Then we build the clock here with the arithmetic combinator for the pulse. Actually let's build it down here. So here we have the clock. These two signals go into the into the AND gate but we don't want to route the clock directly into the AND gate we want only a pulse and for that we need the last desired combinator let's give them some power so they stop blinking <laughs> here we go and let's grab a few barrels to put in that chest. Here we go. So let's use a cable to connect the steel chest with the desired combinator. And this desired combinator then goes to the end gate. Right. Set up very easy. We want to check whether the chest is out of crude oil barrels. So as soon as this is less than one, output a signal. Let's use S here for signal and it shall output one. Now on to the clock. So let's connect the output of the arithmetic combinator with the decider combinator and the output of the desired combinator with the arithmetic combinator. That gives us a loop and the output of the arithmetic combinator also goes to the desired combinator. That's our count for the threshold that'll then sell, send the signal to the end gate. So the arithmetic combinator has an input signal of I use C again for count and to that it shall add 1 and it shall output the signal. So this one is now outputting a signal C of 1 which is also why this whole clock will never reach 0 because this one starts emitting 1C which is needed to start the process. goes into here and here we check if C is still lower than a certain threshold. Let's use a lower number here, let's use 200. And as long as C is lower than 200, it can output C. And as you see now it starts blinking because this one starts outputting. As long as it's lower than 200 it'll feed back into the loop and it'll make the system count up and reset at 200. Now all that's left to do is use this desire combinator to check whether C is within a certain margin of this clock because I use 200 here. Let's use 190 or something here. So if C is bigger than 190 
this desired combinator can output a signal as well. Let's use also again S as a signal with the output count of one. So C will never will will never be higher than 200, but as soon as it's over 190, output signal S. Here we will check for that signal S. This is the AND gate. We'll check for the signal S from this desired combinator and that desired combinator. And as soon as S is bigger than 1, that means only if this and that desired combinator are outputting S simultaneously, then we can output the GO signal for the train here, output G with the quantity of 1. So this one is now counting and as soon as it reaches to 190 it will pulse a signal S to this desired combinator and this chest as soon as it's empty will constantly output a signal S. So here if we go to the end gate if you look at the right hand side it has now the constant input of S and soon it will get the pulse of the second S which will then pulse the signal G to the train. So all you need to do after this point is connect this to the train station signal with the mode of operation send to train and set up the train with the weight condition signal G bigger than zero. And that's it. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you have, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't or I'll feed you to the Kraken. See you next time and always have a hands width of water on your keel.